Yeah. Okay. Oh, boy, look uh, at that. Yeah, yeah, that looks yeah. great, uh, huh? I can't believe you're giving him this. And I don't even want anything for it. <laughs> well, he's very generous, isn't he? Yes, yeah. yes, he is. I'll tell you what, you can take me out to dinner sometime. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. You know, a, a free comic book day is right around the corner, and I wanted to talk to one of my retail aficionados, Perch, about some of the details of free comic book day and, and what it all entails. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on, and this is a great topic to talk about. So, you know, just, you know, general feelings. What do you think about when you when you hear the name free comic book day? Is it is it all free comics and, and giveaways for you as a retailer? Um, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's a complex uh, situation, but I think at its heart and what people should remember about it is free comic book day is marketing. And, and I've talked a lot of times on my channel, I know on your channel as well, about the need for publishers to do more marketing and they need to support shops and they need to get that, that energy out there. They need to put their costs out there to market books. And free comic book day is, is kind of the thing that, that people have settled on of, of being a way to uh, bring extra attention to retailers, do some you know blitz marketing uh, on one day of the year. And so the way this program works is they set up a lot, you know, they, they interact with the different publishers, they set up uh, special issues and everything else that's grown over time. We'll talk about that in a minute. And they create these packages that are very easy for shops to consume. And then they put some of their own dollars into creating the posters and the slicks and the banners and, you know, blasting out to their social media and getting, getting different people uh, on the attention of this is a all store wide event for people to come in and get exposure to comics. And the idea is that people who are you know, new to comics or maybe comics are priced too high come in and get hooked on something and it's a good sampler. Um, and that's that's kind of the idea behind it. And does does the execution you know work with the idea? Does it does it bring in a lot of new customers and maybe retain their interest once they see some of these free comics? Um, so it, it's it, it changes from year to year. So unfortunately, I couldn't say it it it's grown and and been better. I mean, about 2017, I think, was the first year where definitely uh, you know it. I'm going off memory now, so please excuse me here. But um, from year to year, it, we've had different results. And uh, I think around 2016, 2017, right in that area, um, the big publishers not only put out free comics, but actually started to put out um, really significant events. If you're going to buy into the next event, you're going to buy into uh, Secret Empire or, uh, or some of these things, you, you had to show up to free comic book day and get that contained part of the story. I think Civil War II uh, definitely had that as well. And so it, it brought in collectors, um, but the other side of it was they seem to do a better job for whatever reason in the last five years or so of marketing this to non-comic fans and particularly kids. So they, they got parents to say, hey, you want comics for your kids. Free Comic Book Day is the day to get comics for your kids. And so the free comics actually shifted where suddenly a lot more uh, younger titles were in the mix for retailers. And there, there was always some, but there were just more. And it became more of a thing of, of bring kids in and get them, you know, get them a comic. Now, the effectiveness of that, I think, has been pretty mixed. It, 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 we see some repeat customers, but not, not anywhere close to, uh, to what you would hope for. And the biggest reason for that is you're, you're generating kids into your shop. But then the kid titles that you have for sale monthly are still at the $3.99, $2.99. I mean, that kind of high cover price. Now, as a comic collector, if you're going, that seems expensive. Imagine if you're you know, a mom or a dad buying your six, seven-year-old a comic. That's, that's not even, that's, nothing starts at $3 for a comic you expect is probably going to get destroyed. So there's a, that, that pricing issue comes into effect there. The biggest profit uh, benefit to shops and why they do this is it does create marketing. It does bring people to the shop. They get their free comics, but then invariably, uh, for whatever reason, the customer's like, I feel bad that I'm just taking something for free out of this shop. I'll, I'll buy this graphic novel I was on the fence about. So you see great sales that day uh, from kind of existing customers who are there to take advantage of free comic book day and then get something else. I have a couple of friends that, that they have children and, and they've told me specifically their kids go with them to the comic shop one day a year or maybe yeah. it's two days a year, but it's on free comic book day and they, they get a couple of free comics. But, you know, uh, it definitely does drive in traffic. I, I definitely hear that. But it isn't free for you guys, right? You know, there, there's a cost the shops incur that doesn't go to, to the customers. Is it worth it, you know, for you to put out that money to get these people in the door? 
It, it is. I think I would have said that with more hesitation back around 2012, 2013. I was, I was looking at some invoices here. Um, it does cost the shop, and that's a big misnomer. Um, people think that it's free comic book day for the shop as well. So if you ever go to the shop and they're like limit one, limit two, um, the, the reason is the shop paid for all those. It's not, it's, it's not free. Now the shop is, is splitting the cost with the publisher and some of the other people, you know, I think you know, even you know, different entities all come into this, um, to do some things with it. So, uh, it's not, it's not, uh, like you're, pay we're paying what we normally pay. So about, you know, for about 20 copies, about 70 bucks, uh, roughly of, um, of these, uh, sorry, 20 uh, titles, not 20 copies. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're, we're paying stuff, but we're getting the marketing and everything else. From a profit standpoint, um, the auxiliary sales we get off of the crowd coming on free comic book day make it worth it. But I've definitely had customers and I've had people complain. They come in and they're like, why can't I just take one of all of these? And the shop is like, oh, you can have two. And they, they get, you know, I've, I've had customers get really pissy about that. And, and I, you know, it's, it's because it's not just free comic book day. It's so sort of free comic book day. So, you know, in the, here in the Philippines, it's not free comic book day, at least not for me. You know, the, I, I do all my shopping online and, and uh, they offered them all up and they're a dollar each, but it was great because you're right. There were titles in there for kids and I'm always looking for stuff for my kid. And there was actually stuff in there and they were a dollar each. So I don't care if he destroys them. So I went and bought a one one each of every kid's comic that was available that was marketed for boys, and and I had no qualms about it. I was actually very happy. But you know, yeah. I know what a lot of um, comic shops do to compound the you know some of the profits is is you do big sales. Is, is that one of the ways that you take advantage of free comic book day? Is you put some sales on there and maybe get rid of or not get rid of, but get some extra sales out of those graphic novels. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you know when you you know you have a Spider-Man book that's going to be in free comic book day that Marvel's going to be offering. Okay, so that's the place where you want to put some of the graphic novels that aren't selling your your dollar bin of related Spider-Man stories. Anything you can to create tie-in sales. And the the situation you just described is perfect. I mean, you you can put a lot of books out there that are not selling at a reduced price and then market them as well for kids. I mean, obviously you're not going to put Batman damned out there that sells anyway, but you, you know, you probably have a bunch of stock that is younger aged appropriate. And you can say, you know, here's a free comic for kids and here's, here's five more at a dollar each, you know, get rid of some of that stock. And that does happen. Um, you, you, you run sales, you run, I mean, a, a bigger, I want to say it's a trick. It's just a business plan is that you run free comic book day. You say, Hey, in two weeks, we're having a mega graphic novel sale here in the shop. So come back. I mean, the, the goal of free comic book day should be, how do I see this person again mm -hmm. coming to my shop for the first time? And so you get a lot of that, but it, you know, it's a good chance. A lot of shops use it as a way to clear out old posters and just kind of, you know, get, get rid of stuff. They can't sell. So you've got all that extra attention. It's, it's a good thing for comic shops, but it's definitely marketing. Um, I also, I, this has been a huge misnomer. I, and a couple of people, kind of the bigger names have done videos on this. I want to clear up a, a mistruth that has been said. Um, you are not forced to do free comic book day. The publishers do not come and they do not say, if you want to keep getting Marvel comics, you have to go in on free comic book day. It is, it is opt in a hundred percent opt in and some stores don't. Uh, but it is not, you, you are not forced to do this. There's no gun to your head. There's no business penalty. It's completely voluntary. We have seen the, the 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 offerings up from Marvel and DC. Those are the ones I want to talk about. You know, uh, DC Comics has a free comic book day, and I thought this was just brilliant. I'm going to be honest with you. It's got Wally West as as Doctor Manhattan on the cover. It just looks really cool. You know, it, it's leading in. I, I I believe probably into some of this 5G, uh, maybe into um, uh, death metal. You know, kind of thing. And the the picture is so awesome. I know if my my son saw it, he would be like. That's the one I want. What did you think about DC's cover, man? I thought it was great. No, I, I yeah, I, it's definitely, I think, um, I, the, you know, historically, though, the covers for Free Comic Book Day are often quite good. I mean, from all the different companies. They, they know what they're doing. They're trying to snag people who are new readers or putting some dynamic on the cover. The Wally West one is very smart because you just had the Watchmen series do well on I mean, they, they actually get a, you know, in a very sneaky way, play a bunch of different games at once. You get the tie into the HBO show with the Dr. Manhattan symbol. You've got Wally West who looks kind of friendly and maybe appeals to kids. And just, it just, it looks, all parts of it look like something you want to buy. And I, it stands out. It will pop on the, the table. Generally, when you do free comic book day, you've got all these, these temporary comics coming in. 
you know, shops will just lay these out on the counter or any way they can because you're going to have this mob coming in to get it. That comic is going to stand out from all the others for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as soon as I saw it, I was like, man, that's cool. I, I don't know if I'm going to like the story, but I was like, that is going to catch some attention because it, it just looks so badass. You know, as far as Marvel goes, uh, one of their their covers is is like teasing an X Men event. You know, yeah. Jonathan Hickman, Dawn of X is is really picking up steam right now. I'm blown away by the last two issues of X Men. Just the way he's tying that into House of X, Powers of Ten, which I believe launched last co new comic day. I think they did that one last year. Uh, where where do you see that going? And do you think that's going to pique a lot of interest in this upcoming X Men event? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, my money's on this is going to be the the at least the, the start of um, AVX two. Um, I think that's that's what we're going to see. I, I kind of hope not. Uh, honestly, I'd love to see uh, the whole X line breathe for a couple of years before we immediately mm -hmm. go into uh, kind of the nostalgia of Avengers vs X Men, and that sounds really weird to be saying nostalgia to something that just happened. But I mean. Wasn't that long ago. So, uh, I, I mean, th this comic will be a big speculator comic. I think both DC and Marvel, if you're a collector, uh, those books this year are going to be, uh, they're, they're going to be valuable because they are definitely going to hook into their their new events. So it's, it's you know, it's it's always worth doing. It's a fun event. If you've got kids, um, take them. It's it's just a free comic book day is fun. And, and generally, the shops are happy to see you, often overwhelmed. Um, and, and I think there's, there'll be some good titles out there. The, the last one I want to talk about is it's going to be pretty quick. It, it, there's a Spider-Man, a Venom crossover free comic book day. I'm assuming this is the, the follow-up to, uh, absolute carnage followed by Venom Island. Is, is this going to, do you think this is the null finally arriving in earth after he was awakened in absolute carnage? Is this, is that that event? I think it's going to be kind of a, a hybrid of a bunch of events. I mean, Spider-Man has a different event uh, coming out, uh, supposedly, that, that will deal with um, uh, his villain. The name's escaping me at the moment that they've been kind of teasing for a while. We do have Null in the, the Venom uh, event. But if you look at, at what Venom's going to be up to, the arc that's coming after Venom Island and other things, I don't know if the timing works to kick off uh, Null's arrival. I think that's... That's coming a little later. So my guess is that Spider-Man story will kind of try and tell three or four stories in what's going on with Spider-Man, Black Cat, Miles, and Venom. There will probably be a little bit of everything in there is, is my guess. Yeah, it's, it's definitely smart marketing on Marvel's part. That's her premier character. You know, Venom uh, just had a, a pretty substantial movie. Absolute Carnage was a huge sealer. Dawn of X has been huge, so you know, get that X-Men book out there. And so I don't think you're going to have any copies of those once Free Comic Book Day is over. Yeah, I, I think they'll both go, and um, I, I mean, there'll be solid stories. I'm curious what the X-Men story was will be. I do definitely think, like you say, the uh, the Wally West cover is going to be the, the one that stands out for sure. But it, it it will be this will be a bigger year, and every year is getting bigger and bigger um, in terms of what Free Comic Book Day has. I think the publishers have kind of realized it's it's you know free marketing for them to do something big, and they're taking advantage of that. So um, we'll, we'll we'll continue to see this play out. We, we, we did you know, put some good information out here. Free comic book day isn't technically free for anyone but the customers, but it's nice to see the publishers going in there, taking on some of that marketing risk, taking on some of the costs along with the retailers to, to get something out there, to get people excited, get new people in the doors, and maybe hook a couple of readers along the way. You know, I hope they, they, they come up with new initiatives, but I do think free comic book day is a great idea. I think it's cool. I like the way it's executed. You know, I wish the retailers didn't have to pay any money, but if it's bringing people into the door and you're able to start moving some stuff and get extra sales out of it, I think it's just win-win for everybody. It is. And I, I do think, I mean, a lot of us believe um, the, the publishers, I mean, especially now owned by the two mega conglomerates, it's not necessarily the same for the indies, but Marvel and DC, I, I mean, make, make your stuff free. I mean, honestly, I, I, you, you have the money for this marketing effort. You blow it in one kind of Hollywood event and then some that you do for, for your comics or your movies. So just uh, make it free. It, it would just help a lot. But bigger than that, I mean, I would take advantage of this. I think if you're an indie publisher out there, do what Alternate has done and others. Put your comics on newsprint. Make a line of, of two to three comic book uh, kid that are oriented for kids. Make them kid-based. Set that price at a dollar to a dollar fifty launch on free comic book day with a, a nice free comic and then follow that right up with a regular monthly or a set of books that are all in that dollar to dollar 50 range you will you will corner the market 
because everybody is missing the kid's angle right now with, you know, comics printed on really nice paper at three ninety nine, which is completely lost on kids. And the kids are coming into your store. Couldn't agree with you more. Like I said, as soon as I saw all that that that, that product available for my son, it was going to be nice and cheap, and he could destroy it. I don't have to worry about it. But he's going to get to see those comics, going to get to play with them. He's learning how to read right now. It was a great opportunity for me, and I was excited for it. And you know, DC Comics. Think about that little Jimmy and little Sally that are going to be standing in line and all those beautiful Wally West covers are gone. You know, they didn't get there first in line because the re you know, because you didn't make it free. You didn't, you weren't able to get enough in the stores because everyone's going to want that cover. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just, I mean, look at what DC is doing, the amount of money and timing and planning they're putting into 5G and these initiatives to hook younger readers. Hey, here's something even easier. Just go for uh, three or four comics that are written at a younger age, put them out at a cheaper cover price, print them on newsprint, and just, just, just launch on free comic book day. Do your 5G initiative with six to eight titles launched for kids. You don't have to go like uh, Tiny Titans level. Just, just something that's you know you're not going to have faces being ripped off or anything else. Put them out cheap, and and you've got yourself an amazing line. I think it's it's just it's the idea is sitting right there for you. So, you know, take it. Thank you so much for joining me, you know, talking a little bit about uh, free comic book day, the ins and outs as far as retailers go and some of the things that we're looking forward to perch. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, always happy to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news and reviews, and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.